On tonight's True Crime Time, we have someone who have many other videos about Richard Ramirez. And as you likely know by now, these take me a very long time, so if you can like, comment, share, copy link, let me know if this is on your For You page, anything to help me get views, I appreciate you to the fullest extent of the law. I appreciate you to the fullest extent of the law. Stickers with my logo are now available. There are less than 10 left in the original batch. And if you buy from that one, you do get a handwritten note from me, so if you want that, make sure you go to my pinned video for how to buy. Okay, so Ricardo Leva Munoz Ramirez was known as Richard Ramirez, and he was born on Leap Day, February 29th, 1960, and he lived until June 7th, 2013. He was dubbed the Valley Intruder, the Walk-In Killer, and most famously, the Night stalker. He was an American serial killer, serial rapist, kidnapper, child molester, and burglar whose crime spree took place in California between June of 1984 and August of 1985. He was convicted and sentenced to death in 1989, but he died on death row of B-cell lymphoma. Richard's childhood is considered an influence on his crimes. Abused by his father, Ramirez began developing gruesome macabre interests in his early and mid-teens from his older cousin Miguel or Mike Ramirez, who allegedly also taught him some of the military skills that he would go on to use during his year-long killing spree. Ramirez also cultivated a strong interest in Satanism and the occult. Additionally, by the time he had left his home in Texas and moved to California at the age of 22, he had begun frequently using cocaine. He would often commit burglaries to support his drug addiction, many of which were later frequently accompanied by murders or attempted murders, rapes, and assaults. Ramirez's highly publicized home invasion and murder spree terrorized the residents of the greater Los Angeles area and later the San Francisco Bay Area over the course of 14 months. However, his first known murder occurred as early as April of 1984, but this crime was not connected to him, nor was it known to be his doing until 2009. Ramirez used a variety of weapons and different murder methods, including handguns, various types of knives, a machete, a tire iron, and a claw hammer. He was known to attack by punching, pistol whipping, and strangling many of his victims, both manually with his hands and in one instance with a ligature. He stomped at least one victim to death in her sleep and tortured another victim by shocking her with a live electrical cord. Ramirez also frequently enjoyed degrading and humiliating his victims, especially those who survived his attacks or whom he explicitly decided not to kill by forcing them to profess that they loved Satan or telling them to swear on Satan if there were no more valuables left in their homes he had broken into and burglarized. In 1989, Ramirez was convicted of 13 counts of murder, five attempted murders, 11 sexual assaults, and 14 burglaries. The judge who upheld his 19 death sentences remarked that his deeds exhibited cruelty, callousness, and viciousness beyond any human understanding. Ramirez never expressed a shred of remorse for his crimes, and he died on June 7, 2013 of complications from B-cell lymphoma while awaiting execution on California's death row. Ramirez was born in El Paso, Texas on February 29, 1960. As I mentioned, Richard was strongly influenced by his older cousin Miguel starting when he was 12 years old. Miguel was a decorated Green Beret combat veteran who he himself had already become a serial killer and rapist during his time in the U.S. Army in the Vietnam War. Mike often boasted of his war crimes and shared Polaroid photos with Richard showing Vietnamese women who he had raped, murdered, and dismembered or decapitated. Richard later stated that he felt fascinated rather than repulsed by the images and stories Mike shared. I guess he's probably happy to be rotting in hell with Satan.